I don't really bind to Trubisky, Lamar Jackson long term. But I would choose Goff and Mahomes, Wentz as the top. And a lot of that is because you need three things to win in this league now. Head coach, they all have very good offensive coaches. McVay, Andy Reid, and Doug Peterson. Good offensive line and weapons. They have that in L.A., Kansas City, and Philadelphia. And can you be a precision thrower? I think Goff, Mahomes, and Wentz have proven that. But over the next 10 years, if you're talking wins, and I had to make a bet, I think it's Goff and Mahomes. And I think they have the three components. Mahomes is going to get a lot more attention because he's more fun to watch. Just like Favre was a lot more fun to watch than Tom Brady, and still is. But don't kid yourself. Goff has all the traits and all the accessories and all the precision and all the weapons and all the money behind him with Stan Kroenke, the owner, and the genius head coach. Goff's going to be around for a long time, and this is not his last time in this situation. Valentine's coming up, 1-800-Flowers.com. You can get 24 red roses. 18 cost you $29.99. 24, just 10 bucks more, 1-800-Flowers.com. Enter the code HERD, H-E-R-D. All right, so, like, we know certain people are like trash talkers. Muhammad Ali, it was almost poetry. And Gary Payton is like the great trash talker. Michael Jordan. Larry Bird was a massive trash talker. Um, some guy, most, most athletes talk a little trash. Uh, Belichick is the great trash mumbler. Um, so I thought this was trolling yesterday. So he, somebody asked him about Aaron Donald of the Rams. And remember who people consider the best football player ever. And when you look at all time lists, Brady's number one, uh, Lawrence Taylor, who Belichick coached, you know, is somewhere in the top 10. Here's what Belichick said yesterday. Aaron Donald's a great football player. Uh, I wouldn't put anybody ahead of Lawrence Taylor. I can't put anybody ahead of Taylor. Taylor's the best I've ever seen. Certainly the best I've ever coached. Um, and I just wouldn't put anybody ahead of him. Okay. It's one thing to say when you have what many believe is the best player ever to play football. Certainly the most impactful. Lawrence Taylor is the best player I've ever had. But then to dig into it and go certainly the best I've ever coached. Now, remember the word certainly. That's what we call in our business a trigger word. Certainly means obviously. You'd be stupid to even argue it. It's not even comparable. Certainly, if I said Harvard's the best Ivy League school, in my opinion, all right. If I said Harvard is certainly the number one Ivy League school, that's a shot at Yale and Princeton. That's personal. If I said with my wife present, man, that's the best lasagna I've ever had, that's a little dig. But if I said it's certainly the best lasagna ever cooked for me, knowing she takes great pride in cooking, like Brady takes great pride in being great, that is trolling. That, that, that is, you could have just stopped best player I've ever had. Certainly the best player I've ever coached. Isn't that a little four days out from the Super Bowl? You don't think that's a little, this is what Belichick does. Remember Tom Brady's birthday? You know, Tom's just a player. This is the psychology. Bill Parcells was great at this. Joe Torrey was great at this. Phil Jackson was great at this. Nick Saban's great at this. Red Arbach. You can go back to the great coaches of all time. Greg Popovich, getting everybody in his camp to believe it's a unit, take less money. Psychology is a huge part. I mean, go back to Vince Lombardi's quotes about football. Psycho when you're asking guys to run through a wall, 18 games, preseason, postseason, do your job, take a pay cut. Football's hard. Football practice is hard. You got to keep players motivated. I mean, I this week, Belichick even trash mumbled Wade Phillips. Do you remember that? <laughs> remember that one? I certainly changed a lot in the last 30 years, schematically. Wade really hasn't. I mean, he really hasn't. So you got to give him credit for that. He's that the system's lasted. I mean, really, it was just part of his dad's system that he's developed and moved. You know, adapted and developed there. And I think that's a real credit to what he put together 30 years ago. Uh, you 
went back to high school and said, man, it's a credit to you. You haven't changed at all. Is that really a compliment or a shot? He's got mumble bars. He is- I mean, he's, it's also kind of a double shot because not only did he say he didn't change his system, he said it's his daddy's system. Uh, he's a, like, he's he, a trash he, mumbler. You don't even have your own system. <laughs> <laughs> I may be. I may be. Speaking of speaking, I, you know, I was just thinking of this, and Joy owes oh, uh, tr- beautiful. This outfit you had on today, poor people in the Midwest, you're you're taunting them today. You look like you're going out <laughs> you for a margarita. It's after funny that. that you said that because you asked for a sweater this morning, and you were talking about how cold it was, and then mentioned that I I didn't wear sleeves yesterday, and then I I, I saw this dress this morning. I was like, I I'm. 100% positive you're going to say something about the fact I don't have long sleeves on. But I have a heated blanket on on my legs right now. So it's, it, I'm, I'm kind of, it's, it's minus, not a little unfair. Minus 54 in Minneapolis. She's going to be in Fort Lauderdale having a margarita right I mean, after it, the show. It is Los Angeles. It's, it's, right. it's going to be nice outside today probably. It's probably right. going to be in the 70s. I just thought of that. Uh, Joy with the news. No, 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 no. Turn on the news. This is the Herdline News. I do kind of look like I should be sipping a mint julep <laughs> on yes, a you do. balcony or something right now. All right, so 17 years ago, Tom Brady, Belichick, and the Patriots were the lovable underdogs yeah. up to face the greatest show on turf in St. Louis Rams. Now eight Super Bowl appearances and five titles later. They're now the NFL's evil overlord. But for some reason, the Patriots are on a Nobody Believes in Us tour yes. as of late. Yes. And Robert Kraft is continuing that narrative. He shared his thoughts yesterday about the people who are wishing for the end of this dynasty. 17 years ago, we were Cinderella people. And I understand it. And if I wasn't a fan of the Patriots, I'd feel the same way. So that's great. And you know what? To all those people... We hope we're going to make you keep feeling that way for quite a while. <laughs> right, look, they're, tw- they're on top, so I, I I, really can't blame them for, for having this mentality, especially the way, considering the narrative around them all year. You know, it's interesting, Joy. These leagues, their goal is to not have dynasties. That's why when you have a great year in pro sports, you get a bad draft pick. They have salary caps in the NBA, hockey, NFL. They don't want dynasties. We have an NBA dynasty. We have really an NFL dynasty. We have a college football dynasty. Uh, Serena and Federer were tennis dynasties. Sports, college football, college basketball, Duke got the three best players. Overwhelming favorite to win this year. It is remarkable in sports right now. And even in baseball, there's a real separation going on right now in baseball between like Yankees, Red Sox, Dodgers, Cubs, Astros, more money, more players. I in my life, we've never had these concurrent dynasties. And I there's a lot of different reasons for it. I don't want to bore people. I think some of it is millennials are not into the struggle. They want to join momentum. That's